problem. So just to back up here, so the whole point is of the problem here is to have you have a poker game, right? And each the game has different rankings. If you're not familiar with poker, but you have these ranks, and within each category rank, it it has its own ranking. So there's like a, there's a sort order to all of it. So if you ignore jokers, five of a kind doesn't count. Uh, straight flush here is sorted and within the same suite. And then within that you can have the high card is the highest ranking if you're comparing it to another and then you have things like Ace High, which is a Royal Flush. Um, but if you're playing Ace to Five, High Low Split, that's where Ace can be below two. Four of a Kind, Full House, Full House, you have three of a Kind and two of a Kind. Uh, flush is all the same sweet, but not necessarily a straight. We've got a straight, which is, but not all the same, um, not all the same sweet. Uh, but you can have a, a same situation with the ace to five situation here. So ace, low card, uh, three of the kind, two pair, one pair, and then high card. And then within a high card, you've got, okay, what is the next high card? So if you've got a king and a king matching up and what's your second highest card etc 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 the same goes for one pair so if you have the same one pair then it would be the next card and then if that's the same the next card etc um, that's the rules so my implementation here wasn't great but it was a good learning curve for uh, trying stuff out in Rust I mean, you can see all the tabs I got open here. Um, but, so, I have a vector here, mutable vector, I'm pushing on the card. That card is a struct that I implemented here. Uh, that struct, I implemented partial order, partial equate. I later learned that I actually can, if I had done this as just numbers, uh, the face card and the suite, it's just numbers here, I actually would not have needed to implement this, uh, these implementations for ordering. Um, I mean, because you can see right here, I'm actually calling, determining the index from this constants array here. So. I'm grabbing the position anyway where it exists. Um, position is basically like the index of in other languages, uh, but I didn't need to do that because I could have just converted it straight from the token into a number. And then I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't have needed any of this because if you add these traits, which is another thing I was learning, you can add, you can just make them all work. So like one of the guy's solutions I was looking at later after I submitted my stuff, um, this is mine. Um, yeah, so this one was awesome. But look, so you can just have these traits and then it just works on the sorting, which I thought was kind of amazing. Um, I think this gets sorted. I, I'm not sure how it works. I need. I would need to look in further from why that's happening the way that is. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so that was my implementation for a partial equate. I was looking at the positions of the equal, and then I compare positions based on that index. Anyway, so I'm pushing it into the cards, over the tokens, and then sorting those cards, right, based on that. 
So at this point, right, um, the input here is based on these tests. So 4s, 5s, 7h, 8t, that's already sorted. But if you go down here, um, so one of these. 3, 6, 7, 8, 5, H, right? So then that would get sorted to 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, or whatever. So I get sorted in that. And then uh, now I just start checking for rules. So straight is, um, so coming from JavaScript, I would typically do like a, if this was an array, right, I would have something like an every, and then that index is what I was using to check. So I, or a, right, Again, if this was a number, it would have been way easier. But anyway, so effectively I'm saying if the position, if the position of the value minus the previous position, if that's always one and they're always shifted by one, then it's a straight, right? Ace is in straight, which would be ace, two, three, four, five. Uh, then I check for that edge case here for aces in street. Um, again, I'm not happy about that. All of this would could have been different if I had just left it as numbers, but do what you gotta do to learn. So um, cards by suite here. So I'm grouping. Uh, this was another interesting thing that I learned was taking an iterator and folding it into something. Um, this would be kind of like in JavaScript if you were doing an, uh, a reduce function. Right. Reduce, like an accumulator. Right. So in JavaScript, this would be your accumulator. Um, whatever. And then you have to push to it, or whatever, however you do it. Uh, but the fold operation is really cool because you can actually uh, specify, let's see if I can find it here, in these tabs. Slice, that's not it. Yeah, so I'm just gonna search for it again. So fold, iterator fold, here we go. Folds every element into an accumulator by applying the operation. So this is cool because you actually create an initializer. So it takes two arguments, an initial value, and a closure with two arguments. Uh, I started using these more, uh, these these are called closures. I wasn't, the last time I tried this, I wasn't familiar with this syntax. There's like four or five different ways to do accumulators that I realized, or learned. Um, closures, there we go. So, You've got a regular function here, function add, right? But then you can write that function as a closure, which is why you get these two little pipes. Uh, each parameter in the closure can be specified with its uh, type. You can simplify it without these curly braces as well. Uh, so in Rust, 
I want to return something, I have no semicolon, so this is one way to do it. I can also keep it one line. You can get rid of those curly braces. You can get rid of the types too, because it'll, based on how, within this scope, based on how I'm using it, that uh, com essentially compiles to, okay, this is what it's going to be using, which is these integers. Um, and you can see that here when I press F, I32, I32, even though it says unknown, which I thought was which I think is interesting because it that implies it doesn't know how it returns, but I think the Rust analyzer is just broken there because it should know. Hmm. That's weird. Anyway, so that's one way of doing it. Uh, or four or five different ways, whatever. Um, yeah, I was starting to mess around with boxes. I'm not quite there yet in understanding the... I think I'm... yeah, I'm not there yet, so... Uh, yeah, so anyway, so here's a closure. You have a mutable accumulator, which is what I'm expecting to mutate. Uh, I think if I get rid of that mute, I don't know if it'll fail on me. Yeah, it does. So this must be mutable, because you come here and it's like, can't borrow as mutable, it's not declared as mutable, so then you gotta make that mutable. And then here's the card, second parameter. Anyway, so I'm passing I'm, for the cards by suite. Obviously, looking for an entry in that hash map by suite it, that has this extra function or insert, which is kind of neat. Uh, so if I don't get an at value, because I think acc entry. Alright, that's sweet. That's an entry. An entry is what? I think it's an OK. That's not right. Unwrap? Nope. Oh. So I'm doing an OR insert, which is a vector, and then, oh, you would have to tell it what the entry is by the key, uh, but I don't need to here. Well, I am doing it here, so vector entry, turn it, and I'm mapping it into a vector of vectors of cards. So, right, and then I'm sorting those first by the length of the cards and then second by the rank within that how's that right? oh yeah so if you've got two pair right you would sort two and two would go together and then the rank of the first card here. Right, and then I do the same thing on cards by face value uh, because I'm trying to also do group by face for three of a kind and four of a kind, etc. Et yeah, anyway, so I got card by suite, card by face, which I could have just made it one group, but whatever. Uh, it's the only time I actually use card by suite is literally right here. So actually one suite 
what I would have to say instead of having a cards by suite. Yeah, because I use it to determine if I have one. So I could get rid of that. And then cards and all. So you got sweet. Oh, flush. Yeah, so then this is actually is flush. Right. And then it's not a straight, but it's still flush. No, oh, okay. Let's see if that still passes. Does that pass? Yes. Cool. Getting rid of code. Let's have a line of codes here. 160. Still terrible, but oh well. Alright, so now we have cards by face, which could just be groups. Yeah, leave it alone. Alright, cards by face value, etc. is flush, rank, and actually they want to move you. Next to straight. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Got the groups. We got the rules. Right. That's not bad. All right. So cards by face. I really like this fold method, I just don't know how to make it simpler without refactoring card into numbers. So if I did that, then that would change this too. Well, whatever. Alright, so if it's a straight and a flush, then I'm creating this rank thing that I created here, which has a kind, straight flush, and then just the sizes so sizes or positions so positions of each item in the list so here I'm only grabbing one because the only ranking I care on a straight flush is the last card in that flush first if it's reversed but the way I've got these sorted is like if it's a if it's a king high flush, the king is at the end. So rank here, rank kind, factor u size, right? This is helpful. So just adding those order, partial order, partial equal, these automatically go in that order. So I didn't have to do anything for that, which was kind of nice. Uh, but the, and then I already have the other comparison. So straight flush. Yep. Last card. Four of a kind. And within a four of a kind, you've got the ranking of each group, right? So cards by face, then a four of a kind, you're going to have two groups, right? One of them's going to have four cards, the other group's going to have one card. And so you want the ranking of the four card, which is why I'm doing reverse. I mean, I could change all, I mean, I don't know. 
I hate that I did it this way because all these functions are all these reverses. But I'm not gonna. I'm not changing it. <laughs> you know. All right. So reverse map last. All right. So what if we just did this? Iterate all. So where are we reversing? Where, where are we not reversing that we could? Does that do that? Nice. I don't have to do anything there. So card, reverse, fold, that's fine. Cards by face is still fine. And here's the question there. Oh no, so cards by face value. He's looking at the ranking. Why did I do first there? That seems wrong. She must be last. That doesn't seem right. Mapping, integrator, collect. Was that right? First value would have been I don't think that was right. How was that even working before? What? Alright, well I'm getting rid of all my reverses. So. I wish I would have thought of that binary heap uh, implementation. It's so clever. I mean, you don't always want to do clever, but it looked pretty nice. It was like 40 lines of code. Nothing like this mess. Get rid of all the verses. Nope, still got one here. Alright, let's see if I broke things. Yep, I did broke everything. Okay. This is a nice thing about Rust, because you can actually get it's so clear about like, hey, here's where you messed up terribly. And I can see it here too. It's got plain English too. It's like, you did not do this right. What are you doing? Oh god, I broke everything. Two passed. It was just working. Oh geez. Reverse. Sort by. So that's why I didn't understand how this was working before. Oh, that's because this guy. Okay. Maybe it was the other way. Nope. Wrong. Well, here's a fun little thing I also discovered is this debug thing. So when stuff fails, it'll print out the expression. So the, this debug macro will take ownership of whatever uh, whatever expression you're putting into it, and this isn't just a variable. Like you can you can debug all sorts of stuff here, like you know, like a straight flush. It is a straight flush. One on the two pair. Right. So you can actually debug that, and then what will happen is it will print out the line of code where that ran, along with the expression, and it's what it evaluated to, which is so handy. Uh, I mean, 
Yeah, amazing. I haven't used the GDB debugger, debugger yet, so I'd like to do another video on that at some point, but we'll see. Anyway, so you got rank kind here. Oh, that was my stupid thing. So let's get rid of that. Looking at my cards. Oh, there it is. Q, Q, J, J, 8. That's right. Okay. So I reversed it. Straight was correct. Oh, wait. This has to be reversed. It can't be the other way around. Oh, that's why I did it that way. Oops. That's why I did it that way. Yep. Here, let's back it up. There's a reason why I did it that way, and I think it had to do with the fact that when I iterate over it, it has to... Because when it's sorting here, cards by face, No, oh, well, if it does doesn't work, or if it does pass, then that debug's not gonna show up, which is kind of annoying. Um, I guess that's fine to do this. All right, so we reversed it. It's gonna fail everything. Um, but my card says face value. Oh, see, look at that. So it's doing there. And then within a... Two, two, two. Oh, that's why. Because I don't care if it's... Wait. The link. Oh, if the length is equal, then it takes... Oh, that's why it's first. It doesn't matter if it's first or last, because the face value is going to be the same on every one of these. That's why I did it that way. So this one doesn't matter. Values are all the same. So any item is fine here. Okay. Uh, does a straight matter? Maybe. Because zero for I. Oh, because it's backwards. Mm -hmm. Attempt to distract the overflow. I knew it. So zero. Problem is, if it's zero, oh, then I have to. I just have to do these in the other way. Val. Position. Yep. And then this has to be. Card zero dot position. Now dot position. Again, this would have been a million times easier if I'd done it the other way. Mm. Alright. This would be 
see first. It's not needed. Let's see first. Not needed. Not needed. First. 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 Oh, wait. This is in the street. Yep, so I'm doing it right. First, 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 etc. Maybe. You don't know. First, reverse, first, reverse, reverse. so much. No way this is gonna work. I'm gonna check. Yeah. Ah why did I do it that way? No. I'm gonna undo all of that and just call it Changing that is more involved than I would like, so I'm just gonna leave it for now. So, uh, is there anything else? So here, the rankings, right? So on a straight flush, like I said, the last card is the ranking, rank kind, four of a kind. I care about. The last and sorted the other way, right? Which is why it's reversed. Cards by face, last value, two of a kind, or full house. So, a full house, you have three of a kind and two of a kind, right? So, that's what I got here. Technically, I could just say, because I'm doing it a lot. Um, could say sizes here. Cards by face. Fitter. Reverse. Map. I'm doing it a lot, aren't I? So. Look at that. What a freaking mess. Oh my god. Nope, not it. Okay. Kind sizes. Reverse map, blah blah blah. Collect. No. Oh. Well, at least we're doing that. Reverse map, one map, collect. Okay, I like that. Am I doing it again? Cards, enter reverse map, position, collect. So the same cards by. No, I'm doing all the cards. Ah, but it doesn't matter. Because cards by face are all different. So, kind of sizes. That should still work. Yes, right. Um, I'm doing the same thing here. Let's do some Vim. There we go. What was that? Nope, that was not what I wanted. Okay, collect. Look at that. I do that so often. 
It's almost like we could be colored there. So again, this part doesn't matter either. Okay, kind sizes, can sizes. In a straight, you want the last card. Whoa, what's going on here? What's he complaining about? Hello. Alright, so now I've got time sizes, unwrap, last, last unwrap length, yeah. Look at that, getting so clean now. Ugh, that's such ugly gun before. I'm embarrassed. Okay. Now that I've done that, uh, length of the last, oh, second to last. Right. And then the strings is flush, top kind. Okay. So here's another cool thing you can do. So we've got the straight flush, top kind, cards by face, length is two. Right? So watch this. Straight. You can do straight flush, right? And what we're going to do is we're gonna say let rank equals the output of that. If it's a straight and it's a flush, then it's one of these, right? If it's a, if it's not a straight, and this is like where part of that other solution came in, and now I'm seeing it from here. So we're refactoring this to using a match. So we're going to take, if it's not a straight, or sorry, if it is a straight and it's not a flush, then what is it? It's a actually not a straight and is a flush. So let's do that one first. Right. Not a straight is a flush. Let me get rid of that. Um, This is end straight, right? It is a straight. It's not a flush. Right? And actually, what I'll do is I'll. Okay, right, so then ace is end straight. I'm going to take a quick break. 
All right. Um, where were we? So if it's a straight and it's flush, then or sorry, if it's a straight and it's not flush, then it's just a straight. Unless right. Here, I can see here. Okay. So we're taking care of these three and this. Stop by base dot So the next thing to match on would be top kind, which is Four, three, three, two, two. Right, so match top kind. Four. So top kind is three if kinds kinds goes to them. Three if kind equals three. Okay. We have two if kind equals three, and um. Three of a kind. The other one would be two and two. Oh no, two of kinds equals three. I think you can get away with just saying this, right? I don't think you need that other. Because if it's a two and you have three, then the other two have to be. There's no other possibility. So I don't think that this part was necessary. Okay, so now you have two of kind equals four. One pair. And finally. I like it. It's slightly better. It's 
in this crazy looking mesh. Oh, I ruined that. Remove these parents. Oh, okay. Thanks. So that's Rust Analyzer doing that. And I think that's also Clippy. Flush is not found in the scope. What? What is Flush? I need to be. Aces can end a straight bow. See, that's what I thought I did. Aces can end a straight bow. What's wrong with that? If aces end straight, debug. So if you don't want to return it, you can just say and, which is in my view. Twelve, three, two, one, zero. Yeah, that's high card. No, it's not a high card. Oops. Oh, because it's not a straight. Did I change that? Ace is straight. Dang it. That was the issue. So it's a straight. So... Ace is in straight. That should fix that. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah. So that was a good way to refactor that. Um, I could probably do a little bit more here, where I'm grabbing the last card each time. Card that last wrap. That position, right? And I can even say last card link. Last card in here. Oh. Yeah, not too bad. So we have this match, and then I'm pushing it into the hand ranks here, which I like this technique because it's a. I'm using a tuple, so rather than a hash map, I'm having a tuple of the a vector tuple. That way, I can actually sort them by the rank, right? And then as I go through the rank, and you know what, let's let's go ahead and just put that into its own so what would that be? And ranks so Let's 
hands. And it returns a vector. Oh, that too. Right. A string rank. Right. So we're going to take all this nonsense. And what do I need? Hands. Vector rank. Oh, because I'm not actually returning it. It's still not great, it's the really long code base implementation, but um, you know. Yeah. All right. Hands and ranks ordering. Um, yeah, I'm going to call it.